Hello again. We have finished explaining several classification and regression algorithms and now we start explaining some clustering algorithms. Clustering uh, is the process of dividing a data set into groups. Uh, clustering is sometimes known as the unsupervised learning uh, technique or usually just in general unsupervised learning and again it's the idea or the process of dividing a data set into a group or clusters now this group should have the two following conditions the members of each group are as similar as possible to each other they need to be as close as possible to each other and at the same time different groups are dissimilar i.e. they are as far as possible from one another so the, the the objects in one group in the same group they need they need to be very similar or as similar as possible and objects in different groups or different clusters they need to be as far or as different as possible now a cluster is just a subset of the data which is similar so we have big data set maybe and then we, we can divide it into sub data sets each of them contains similar um, elements or components or objects. Now clustering can actually uncover previous undetected relationships in a data set and there are many applications for cluster analysis. For example, in business, cluster analysis can be used to discover and characterize customer segments for marketing purposes and probably also in, not probably, well really in biology, it is actually used for maybe classification of plants and animals given their features so clustering does have a real application in our day-to-day -day life now there are two main groups of clustering algorithms uh, hierarchical groups and partitive groups in hierarchical groups uh, we have agglomerative clustering and divisive clustering and in partitive clustering we have uh, k-means clustering and self-organizing map clustering we've studied k-means uh, a couple of times before now requirements for a good clustering method the, uh, a clustering method to be a good one it needs to have the ability to, to discover some or all preferably all of the hidden clusters within cluster similarity and between cluster similarity um, what that means is uh, we need to have the, the method needs to be aware of how similar or dissimilar clusters are and how similar the uh, components of each clusters are it needs to have the ability to uh, deal with various types of attributes numerical attributes categorical attributes can deal with noise and outliers noisy data means that for example if we have two data points two or more data points which have the exact same values of uh, attributes but they have different classes or different clusters then that's noisy that's called noisy data and clustering methods need to be able to deal with these cases and outliers are data points which are far away from the average so if you plot the data we can see that for example several points are close and one or two of them are too far of them so these these are called outliers and sometimes they influence the performance of such algorithms it can handle high, high dimensionality and it needs to be scalable interpretable and usable the idea of high dimensionality is that if we have a large number of descriptors or features now ideally that would be very good because the more we can describe the data the more we can uh, uh, decide what a data point uh, belongs to but in uh, 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 data mining algorithms having a high uh, number of features is not always good that can influence the performance of classifiers or regressors in a negative way but in general clustering methods need to be able to handle high dimensional uh, data now for measuring the similarity this is a very important issue in clustering which is to you know determine the similarity between two objects how do we decide whether two objects or two cases are similar and the reason is that so we can perform uh, oh sorry so through that clusters can be formed from objects with high similarity within clusters and low similarity between clusters so the idea is as we mentioned before that 
within the same cluster we need our objects to be very similar and between different clusters we want them to be uh, dissimilar so low similarity between clusters and high similarity within clusters that means inside each cluster commonly to measure similarity or dissimilarity between objects a distance measure such as Euclidean Manhattan or Minkowski is used so uh, we are familiar with, the, with these distances by now Euclidean distance the square root of the sum of the squared differences between two points x i and y i <coughs> and the Manhattan we don't actually uh, square the difference we just take the uh, absolute value of the difference and we sum and for the Minkowski uh, it's similar to Euclidean but there the power is 2 and we take the square root here the power is Q so we raise the difference you notice there we take the absolute value because the difference can be negative and Q now can be 2, 3, 4, 5 or more so Q can be uh, uh, an even or an odd number that's why we do the absolute because an odd number if we <coughs> multiply a negative number an odd number of times by itself then the result will be odd I'm sorry, the result will be negative rather than positive, whereas if it's 2, then the result will always be positive. So anyway, and one thing to notice here that similarity and dissimilarity means that when we use the similarity measure, then we need the uh, uh, distance to be as small as possible. Yes, and when we use uh, um, the similarity measure, then we need to, the, uh, the, uh, the, the result to be as large as possible. That tells us how dissimilar how different things are whereas for the similar I'm sorry no 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 that's the opposite actually yeah, the opposite for similarity we need the value to be as large as possible because that tells us how similar things are the more uh, similar they are the larger the value is or the larger the value is the, the similar they are and then for this similarity is the opposite so if the value is small uh, if, if the value is small then they, uh, our objects are uh, um, <coughs> similar and if the value is high then uh, the objects are not similar a distance function returns a lower value for pairs of objects that are more similar to one another so for a distance we want the value uh, the, to be as small as possible uh, for the objects to be similar to each other now I'm going to stop here in the next video I'll start to explain the different uh, uh, groups or different methods for performing clustering. We'll start with hierarchical clustering. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.